Um, Father Alban, what do you think is the impact of the coronavirus on religious practice and belief, particularly from a Roman Catholic perspective? Well, um, I think, you know, setting aside the awfulness that has given rise to the lockdown, um, I think the experience of the lockdown has been or can be at the very least interesting, at the very best, um, uh, you know, inducing some serious reconsiderations. I mean, I think that it all depends how isolated you are, whether you're isolated with others or on your own. Um, but I think that um, I've found that the, the, the fundamental experience of this isolation um, has been to help one to distinguish between needs and wants, you know, as things become unavailable and as movement becomes restricted. So I think that's a personal, and, I, and, and I'm sure that applies you know, in, in, in the way we used to speak of spiritually um, for everybody, to everybody. Um, but um, I think honestly, the detachment from the more overtly institutional aspects of religious practice um, has, I think, has the capacity at least to enable people to clarify their commitments, to, to examine their dependencies. And I think that that's very important. I mean, um, you know, uh, from, from a clergy point of view, I think it's probably very challenging. Uh, I mean, I think it might make a lot of priests in particular, um, you know, re-examine their status, their role, their function, etc. I think some people might find it quite painful to find themselves confined to barracks with, with little to do, but that's no bad thing. I mean, I, I mean, rather mischievously, I've thought it's a, a, a wonderful antidote to clericalism, you know, where you're suddenly dethroned from this managerial status and you suddenly begin to realize people at home are beginning to need you less and less, or at least they're gonna need you just for the essentials. Perhaps you, that's where you should be concentrating anyway. You know? And now you're, you're Dean, of course, of the Cambridge College, um, what's happened to your, your, your encounter, your pastoral work with, with students? Because obviously there may be some left in the college, but yeah. the majority have gone home. So I suppose there are two questions there. One, what's happened to you personally? How are you coping personally from a religious perspective? And, and secondly, in terms of your vocation? Well, there are students left in the college, a large number, um, and some of them are, are quarantined. Um, when I've gone in, um, the contact obviously has to be proximate. Um, uh, do I mean proximate anyway? Certainly compli compliant. Um, people have been in touch by phone quite a bit. Um, they all have my mobile. Um, a couple of people have got in touch by Skype. But in general, um, I, I think that people have just hunkered down and they're either getting on with it and surviving and, and concentrating on their work and making up for lost time, etc. I haven't really come across any serious problems of anxiety or people really losing it and beginning to feel totally disorientated. Um, so, you know, I'm on hand um, and um, Liturgically, we've, we've kept everything going and sent it out by way of video or on the YouTube on the page of the college. Um, and that's been much appreciated by a lot of people, including students. Um, so it, it hasn't made a huge amount of difference. It, it's, if anything, it's cut down the workload. For me personally, um, again, um, I've been doing everything that I'm required to do liturgically. Um, pastorally it's a matter of watching and waiting and being available um, as always pastoral work depends to a great extent on the quality of presence well now we've had to reconfigure the notion of presence so how do you understand presence now in this sort of isolated time well i mean i think we're all experiencing that uh, skype and technology are no substitute for face-to-face -face physical contact. And um, I, there'd be something wrong if we weren't finding that a burden. And I find that a burden. I think that the thing I find most difficult is the lack of company and the lack of uh, you know, interaction, physical interaction with the people who constitute our own community, etc. cetera. Um, so pre but presence, of course, is much more than physical presence. You know, and 
you might say, it always, always struck me how wonderfully, you know, monks and nuns living the enclosed life speak so vividly about praying for the world. And um, having experienced that kind of life myself, um, there is a palpable sense of presence of the world and your presence to it, even though you're physically remote from it or from, from the rest of the world. You talk about the need for physical presence and you're, you're, you're missing it, as, as so many of us do. I'm just wondering if there's a new presence that you've discovered as a result of being isolated, uh, that presence being a, a, a strange connection with um, not just students, but with individuals in Cambridge and beyond because they want to be in touch with you. Well, certainly, um, certainly uh, people are in touch all the time. Um, I'm not sure that's a discovery of something new as a kind of, you know, um, you know expansion of something that's already there. Um, I mean, we take it for granted, don't we? We can just, you know, walk out of the front door and knock on somebody else's front door. We can invite people around. And, and that, I think, is a really, for, I think that's a really beneficial experience. To, to, we no longer take it for granted. You know, and I think if we ever get back to taking it for granted, we've, we've lost the opportunity to, to learn the lessons. Let's move on to one or two specific Roman Catholic perspectives. In other words, the, the place, the building, the church, um, the Eucharist, these are all very physical. Yeah. And they can yeah. no longer take place in the same way. Certainly the buildings are closed or the church yeah. is closed um, and you're not there sharing bread or with the wafer. Uh, with other people. What, what, what does that mean for Catholic self-understanding? It's a definite impoverishment. It's a definite lack because the sacraments are rooted in the earth. They're rooted in physicality. They're all, uh, as it were, the, the manifestation of, or the making explicit of God's presence but through the medium of physical things. You know, sacraments are for human beings, they're embodied people. So when you can't avail yourself of the sacraments, there is a real sense of loss. And it, it struck me um, that this is what it must have been like, you know, in you know, wartime occupied countries, in com former communist nations, where people were cut off from the, 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 the solace of the sacraments even in penal times in England, when people were cut off from the sacraments. And, and it's, it's a felt loss. You know, that's why pe people risk their lives and sacrifice their lives to bring the sacraments to the people. Does it, does it, I was going to use the term threaten, it's not the right word, but does it, does it uh, change the sacrament? In other words, doesn't, isn't Pope Francis talking about um, a fundamental change in the human relationship with the divine because um, the faithful are not able to go to church? Well, I mean, I think he's speaking about, you know, it's a situation we have to be tolerant of. I don't think he's talking about ideals, and I don't think there is ever going to be a change in the, the constitution of our human nature as embodied souls. Um, you know, we, we are, we are, physical beings there's no way we're going to get away from that and when we try to whenever we've tried to get away from that trouble ensues so, so with the pope's actually sort of i think trying to help people to get through this particular period so you see it obviously as we all do and hope to as a temporary blip in 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 our lives um and i i can't help but end by asking you well what are the long-term consequences. Now, I appreciate that we're still uh, going through it and we're still working it out, but have you got any glimmers of what it might look like? One thing I hope doesn't happen is that people um, somehow continue to keep their distance from other people. I mean, it's unnerving, isn't it, on the streets for people to walk away from you. Now, obviously, you, you, you dilute it by saying hello or you know smiling or whatever but i hope that we can get back to normal physical presence i, I do think there's going to be quite apart from all the financial problems that many many people are going to face and the economic changes i hope that we don't um, inherit from all of this um, huge problems of mental health 
I mean, I, I can only imagine what it must be like if you do suffer from anxiety, if you're in isolation absolutely on your own. And then, of course, if you're not in isolation on your own, but with others, it may be the last place you want to be. And we know there are already consequences bubbling to the surface to do with domestic disarray and, and, and violence, etc. So I, I, I just hope that the, the, the bequests of this period in terms of the negatives don't have an impact on our human interactions and don't leave us with a legacy uh, that takes us generations to, to throw off and to work through. I think the positive legacy is um, just like when you go on retreat or you spend time in, in chosen solitude, you're thrown upon your own resources or even more important, you're thrown upon divine resources and you, you, you learn rapidly the difference between what you want and what you need. And you learn, I think, to look outwards from yourself. You know, you have to go into yourself to examine your own inner resources, but these, in a kind of Augustinian way, lead you then to, to find God within. Um, and I think that that could be a huge benefit for all of us. And I also do think, lastly, that it could restore an even more acute sense of community. People have become dependent in ways, or they've acknowledged dependence, and I think that then could lead to a greater sensibility, uh, a community, communal sensibility, and that we might all flourish as human beings, embodied, interconnected, interdependent, and flourishing as such. Father Alban McCoy, thank you very much. Pleasure, Ed. Pleasure. <laughs>